Hello and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. All right. Welcome to the Week Change Gang. I hope it's been a good one for you and that the one ahead is wonderful. Today, I have an amazing person with me. Uh, Her name's Ophelia Martin, and she is a hypnotherapist, but she also has some other little fun things that she does in her life. And so I want to dive in and chat about all of that. Thanks for being here today, Ophelia. Thank you, Laura, for having me. You bet. When we initially connected, it was to talk about hypnotherapy and what you do with hypnosis and and how that kind of applies. And then we dug in and started talking a little more. And you actually are in my woo world as well. So you are psychic medium and you use your your ability to kind of tap into auras to help some of the people that you work with. So I want to dive into a little bit of that, too. But first, tell me a little bit. Which came first, I guess? The, were you working in the, in the psychic and intuitive stuff or did you dive into hypnosis first? So I dive in hypnosis first because I have two parents that are very against religion or any kind of woo woo stuff. So my beliefs about that was always that it doesn't exist, but I always was very attracted to the mind and what we can do with the mind. Apparently, they said three to four percent only. And look what we've done with it. So that's something that didn't make sense to me. And I've dive into hypnosis first, spiritual hypnosis, actually. And I trained with the famous Antonio Sanjo. That was a big step for me. And he's a very good person. He's not a woo-woo person. He's a very down-to-earth person. So that's I really like and I really resonate. Then I thought... It's good, but I want to know a bit more. And so I study Ericksonian hypnotherapy. Then I felt like I've got so many tools that I really enjoyed. And it was like Christmas, you know, when you're like so excited, you want to try everything (laughs) on everyone. And it's like, oh, yeah, I like that. Let me try that on you. That was really, really what makes me an hypnotherapist, really. How I called my hypnotherapist, myself hypnotherapist. But you know, the in in the background when Feeling client, having client, you, you have them in front of you, you as well feel. You have a feeling and you're thinking, oh, what's that? One day in, in a session with a person that was coming to see me for, she wanted to clear out a relationship that she, she had with somebody and that was kind of secret. But when she was talking to me, I, I could feel such a strong presence in the seat, in the seat in my chair for the, for the, for the client so strongly and I could even feel and I couldn't say see because I didn't see I felt he was tall big guy very joking and he was just like having this conversation with my client in front and you know saying things like oh I can't believe she said that and, and that man is an idiot and I was like oh am I going crazy what's <laughs> happening and I was trying to get into what my client was saying because she was very anxious and she was stressed and she was talking a lot and a lot and I was thinking trying to grab everything she was saying not feeling too disturbed but anyway we did some set we did a, a, a session and we did some releasing and then when she get out of the hypnosis she say oh by the way sometimes I just wonder would you feel things and I was like very astonished by the, the question I was like oh, should I say it or not because now she she was like, it was a, like a big invitation, you know? Yeah, okay. Well, because you asked, actually, I, it was a bit weird because I felt somebody very tall and it was a bit joking. And she said, oh, but I got married when I was 28, just for six months. And then he died in a car accident. And it was very, a big, big tall gun and, and, and making so many jokes. And I was like, oh, oh my God. I couldn't believe it. That helps me to go and wanted to know a bit more and a good deep, a bit deeper into all of that. I'll bet it did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a vivid experience to have. And I, I'm sure it did make you go like, Oh my goodness. I, I might be a little crazy. What's happening? Yeah. That's the first thing you think. Yeah. 
Well, that's that's incredible. Have you ha- did you even think about anything like that before? Did you after that full experience? Did you look back and go, oh, I might have had some of that before and just didn't really recognize it? Yes, exactly. Then then you're just looking back and you'll just recall a little experience that you just brush it away. And you'll say, oh, but my God, that was that. And, and, and that was that. Oh, but that was that. Okay. And then you, you put the dots together, but it's true. If you don't really dive into it, if you're not interested in it, it just goes away, but it's everyone. I'm sure everyone has some kind of experiences or subtle experiences or a thought, but they just brush it away because they believe system. They believe it doesn't exist. But it's like saying the the wind doesn't exist. It does exist, except you don't see it. Good point. That's that's a good <laughs> comparison right there. That's a very good comparison, and that's so true. And it's it's interesting because I learned a long a while back uh, that we all have. I agree with you. We all have intuition. We all have the ability to talk to spirit. We all have all of that. And people tend to go, "You're so gifted," or "You have that gift," or "You." But we all. It's it's not. It is a gift in that, yes, we get to do it, but it's not a special gift that's given to just certain people. Everyone has the ability to do that if they want to. They feel like, I would love to do that, and they're willing to step in and and move in that energy. It's incredible and wonderful. With that, with having that experience and obviously then saying, okay, I'm going to apparently talk to dead people. (laughs) You know, what am I doing with that? Yeah. And so what do I do with that? Did you move into working with kind of opening the whole psychic door of doing psychic readings or even for yourself, opening that? And then you also work in auras and kind of on that. Did it just open the door wide for everything for you? Yes, yes, but it's been many, many little steps, many little things happening in my life that made me kind of slowly going this way. The last thing that really, I would say, opened a big door was as well that experience, of course, but it just it stays in your mind, but it's just still a question mark and it's hanging in there. But then my ex-partner had his brother died very quickly after six months we were together. I really kind of felt something again there. I thought, well, it's just cannot be just a coincidence as well, you know. I've decided to take a courses and just have a look because with that previous experience and stuff. And I was about to enroll in a very expensive courses called uh, with James, James Van Pra and um, oh, yeah. he's a famous medium in, in America. And I was like, oh, but that's so expensive. Don't know. It's just recorded. I want to really ask somebody to, somebody to talk to and don't know what to do really. And I was going to enroll. I couldn't be closer to hit the button. I was putting my last no- three numbers <laughs> and um, I held loud and clear. Just check another one. Ooh. I was like, all right. Okay. Well, what am I doing with this again? What do you want even me to put in the Google toolbar? I mean, I, all right. So I just go with that. And I think I typed something like mediumship course or something and bang, the first I put on and it was the Psychic College of London and they have many courses and I rolled in that and that was the big door. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yes. It's so, and it's so, it is so key to connect with the right person when you're training. I love the person, my mentor, he's Charlie Kelly and he happens to be over in the UK as well. He is so, he's so a person that you wouldn't expect to be doing what he's doing, but he does it so incredibly well. And he teaches in a way that, well, he'll just throw you in. I mean, it's not, it's so funny because when I was, took his first, very first course I ever took, he does classes sometimes that are like a couple hours. And so you can kind of get to know him and do things. And, and so I did one of those and you're on for like five, 10 minutes having a conversation. He's talking. Hi, how's everybody? What's going on? And it's like, okay, we're going to go in a room and do a reading. And I was like, I panicked. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it just automatically shows you, you can do it. You can do it. And I love that about him. And he's he's always really straightforward about it. But he does, whether he likes to put it forward or not, he has a great heart. And so when you took that course and that, and that led into other things, was part of that tapping into the aura? Yeah, you know, it just came afterwards. You you have either, you have 
some clairs, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentience, and claircognitions. But one would open after the other, and sometimes one would just close a little bit more and let the space to the other clair to open. So it's for me, for it's very recent that I can hear more regularly, I would say, or let's say having a bit, maybe a little bit more control. And that takes time to build up, really, and practice. I mean, when I say time, it's practice, really. Because yes. when you are clairvoyant, sometimes I have mini videos coming or mini images, like a blip of a second. But then you have to understand and decipher what it means because it's not always literal. And it, it has to resonate with the person you, you, you're reading. Yes, that's true. And sometimes it is. It's a bit of a game of charades, but it's all in how we, you know, how we connect or how we choose. Because if you're quite literal and you ask for something quite literal, you know, just show me what you want me to say or just give me what you want me to say. And you say that oftentimes that's exactly the right thing, whether it makes sense to you or not. Yes, it's not meant yes. to make sense to the person doing the reading. It's meant to make sense to the person you're doing the reading for. And I think sometimes when people are learning they get scared. I know I did. I'm like, I don't understand what oh, that means. Too, yeah, yeah. You try to figure it out in your own brain and then it comes out all wrong. But if you go back and say, well, what about this? They're like, oh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You mentioned that when you're doing hypnosis sometimes for people, you do kind of see the aura, gather the energy, get an intuitive feeling. And I want to say most people, if you're listening to me, you know that you already know what an aura is. But an aura is, is an energy field that we all have around us. And, and it is different depending oftentimes what's going on in our lives or for us. Or Is there static? Is there an, a, kind of an original aura? I guess I don't know that. that you oh, but me, what do you mean by original aura? Sorry. Well, so is there one that doesn't change? Is there like a part of us that is always there? Or oh, no, your, your aura yeah. is is completely changing all the time. From my okay. understanding, you can, it can be very, you can make it very big, very expanded, shrink it. You can make, make it, it the colors change all the times. The information, all your, all your information about your relationship with your, the, the people in your family, the birth date. Uh, sorry, the birthday, the dates, all that is in your aura, floating around. My belief is is not that today they are searching where is the consciousness. Up until I went into a bit more mediumship, now I know, yeah, consciousness is not in the brain. It's just definitely in a, in the aura. That's what mediums speak up when they connect to somebody. Ooh, that's fascinating. That's that's yes. an interesting thought and one that isn't. Well known, I would think so that, but that's, that makes sense that, cause that's where the energy is and that's yeah. the part, you know, that we, that we carry with us. So when you're doing a session and you have something like that come in, what's that like for you? What do you do with that when, when you have information that comes while you're doing a session? When the client, I give them sometimes during the hypnosis, sometimes in certain protocol to process or to do what I've been asked them to do, like, I don't know, writing a, a letter, for example, mentally. So there is a, a gap of time. In that time, I tune in and I tune into their aura to see their color because I know their color is always indicated and an indi- sorry, indicator for me to see their state of mind at that moment. And if there is shadow, gray, dark holes, more rarely holes, but if there is, I mentally sew it. I imagine I have a needle with a line of light and I do like the lemniscate shape, which is the harmonic eight, and I sew it back like this. So energetically, then their aura is, again, I would say ready to go. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and generally uh, I use now colors a lot, for cleaning, for emotional baggage, there's all of that. And that came because for the Jacqueline Hypnosis Academy for the Christmas party, I volunteered to give a message and I just wanted to try channeling. So I tried a bit, some channeling. And in that message was all about that colors and stuff. And I said, wow, you know what? I'm just going to try it, see if that works. And it, I feel it really does work. 
That's so cool. I love color. I connect with color a lot too. I'm ha- actually happen to be cert- certified color coach from someone that I train with. And oh, nice. Well, we should have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about that, right? But what I found too is that uh, I trained in it as an energy, as working in the energy of it. But I also really use it when I'm working with people now as a subconscious anchor or trigger for them as well. So when we're working with something, you know, when I'm coaching with someone or or working with them, I give them a color and say, okay, if you want to do this, this or this, this is the color you're going to do. And you're going to bring it in, you know, activate it and then find an anchor, something and flowers or a shirt or something that has that color. And then for the whole week, every time you see that color, your subconscious is going to Go and search for that thing that you want, you know, clarity or to work on your communication and have better communication or to really tap into your own wisdom, all of those things. And oh, I, I love that. Color as an anchor. Yes, really like, I like that. Isn't that great? I love that. And it's so easy for people because it is very subconscious. I mean, colors around us all the time every day. But if we specifically put something out too, when you walk by it, it might, Oh, consciously. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm going to use that. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, you're welcome. Sometimes the, the, and the subconscious is always seeing it. So then every time it's going to go and continually bring that information. And then you just have to be in that awareness of what's the information I'm getting. You know, you might pull up next to a big white car when you're doing white and all of a sudden go, Oh, white. And it's like, Oh, what are you thinking right now? What were you thinking about? Or what's coming next? Because that's important information. That's incredible information. People think it's too simple, but it's incredibly powerful. Yeah. Um, Often the simplest things are just the the best, really. It's super fun. I love that idea of energetically sewing those pieces together. And I just recently started, and I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but moving in the energy of that healing process when I'm doing the hypnosis, too, of going... It's not going to hurt anything. Let's see what what happens. Let's see what comes through that process because we're working in the whole person. And I think that when you do that, it all comes together because for me, it all comes together anyway. I mean, we have that universal energy that's out there. We're connecting to whatever you want to term it, which I believe our access point is our subconscious, that information filters in and gets into that subconscious. And then from there, the subconscious kind of moves in and and activates our intuition and all the information that kind of comes from that. And so it's all connected in in my mind. It's all exactly. No, no, no. Yes, definitely. (laughs) Um, Sometimes, um, sometimes there is, I was, I had ethically a problem with that at the beginning because I said, no, you can't, you can't do that if you don't ask permission, you know, and that's what people tells you when you learn Reiki and all the things that you have to ask permission. And I asked one of my teacher one day and they said, you know, it's just like when you bring a bucket of flour to somebody who has in, who is in hospital, they can accept it or they can refuse it, but it's there at least if they want to. And it's still a nice gest- gesture. So I was like, okay, now I'm at peace with that. And that's when I started yes. to do that. Yeah. I love that. And there are two thoughts, and there are definitely two thoughts processes in that way. One person I work with in intention work says that you, you have to have their permission to do like intention work for them with, unless they are incapable of giving it. And yes. Well, okay. And, but then another one of my people who does healing intuitively and everything absolutely says, just like the flower. I love that. The yeah. flower in it. They can take it or they can say Just no thanks. Give it. Yeah. You know, and so, and I like that. I think that I would love it if somebody put healing out there for me, whether I knew it or not. So yes, definitely. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that. But how do you think that the subconscious and all of the energy and the work, do you think it's a little bit like I said, or do you have a different way of looking at the connection for it all? To me, it's just a matter of really vocabulary because it's all the same, but, but to, Hypnotist, you are going to talk about subconscious and to medium, you're going to talk about source and to somebody else, you're going to talk about and use a different word. But at the se- at the end, it's just the same. It's an energy to me. It manifests how, how, 
how you can tap into, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I think so too. I think it is a matter of words that people use. And, and words are important. Words are very important to people. I found that as I start thinking about it and somebody will say something about consciousness or spirit or, and I'm like, Oh, well, that's exactly the same as this over here. Exactly. Yeah. So it all started kind of coming together for me. As, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's all, it's kind of all the same things. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just depends if you have a person in front of you, you have to respect their belief and, and then use the word they feel comfortable with. But I really think at the end, it's just all the same, really. Yes, that's true, because some people that come for the hypnosis don't, aren't going to actually understand that you're sowing their energetic field back to you. Yeah, they will say, oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> Oh, they might not understand how wonderful they feel afterwards that it's just the hypnosis and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Everyone accepts what they can accept. And eventually what's funny is sometimes I'll be working with someone and through the course of it, a time or two in, all of a sudden the whole conversation comes up about the woo world or, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, we have the whole conversation in that. And I think it's fun that it's still that sometimes you have that little mantle on or that little cloak. That is, oh, yeah, I'm not showing you that side of me right now. But then as soon as the word said, you know, gets said or something, it's like, what? It comes off and you just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's lovely that you're able to combine all that and that you've taken the time to, to do that in such a wonderful way for people because it does make a difference and it is a wonderful part of what you do, I think. So. I think it's the new generation. I really believe that colors, uh, hypnosis, so expansion of mind, and sound is just really what what's going to really help uh, in the next hundred years, you know? Because sound people, is, yeah, I haven't, people I haven't worked. turn away from uh, medical things; they're just fed up sometimes. I'm not saying it's 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 the way forward. It is necessary, and I'm glad we have it, and we are not like in the middle age. But but some people that just want to explore something else. Well, yes. And no, I, I use my doctor and, you know, I have that side of what I need and to do all the checkups and, and to, you know, be in the places that I need to be as well. They're a great support system, which is hopefully what they are for most people is a support system, but not something to drive your life or to really guide you always. Sometimes there's information that you know is different. And when you have those feelings and when you're like, gosh, that doesn't, I don't want to do that or that doesn't feel right or whatever it is. You have to follow that intuitive space that your body is kind of guiding you in. And it might lead you to hypnosis. It might lead you to sound therapy or something else. And that might be a really healing experience. And the thing to remember for that is that people think, well, that's my that's healing on my spiritual side or on my energetic side or anything. But hypnosis, actually, when you're working with the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind runs your body. So it's a physical think, thing, yeah. too. We we heal physical things by working with the subconscious all the time. All the time. Yeah. And I so think that's it's nice. Of, sorry. No, go ahead. It's nice to be able to do both. You know, for example, I have this client who is doing a uh, chemotherapy every two weeks since she have a cancer now since 2016. And she said she she's happy to have hypnosis on the side or to do other things at the same time because that really helps her mentally, physically. I think it's not even a, a choice. Oh, I prefer that or I prefer that. It's just you can combine that. Right. That's what I do. That's what yeah. I do. I do. Yeah. I use all of the different things available to me and I pick and choose because I might want this part of the medical field and this part of the energetic field and this part of the mental field or whatever. I often say that about talk therapy as well. Talk therapy has a wonderful place in the world because sometimes you need someone to talk to outside yes. of what's going on. However, to really go in and heal some of the things that need to be healed from Something that's happened to you in the past or change the direction forward in some, in some way. I, I love that hypnosis is there because it's so much quicker, easier and more complete in that particular part of it. Yeah. We can help both. We can do both and yes. be helpful. Hmm. Well, thanks so much for this conversation. I have loved it. It's been a joy to my heart to hear you share about 
all of those things. And I'd love for you to tell people where they can connect with you, Ophelia. So if you want to do that for a second, I'd be grateful. Thank you. The people can reach me on uh, heartmedium.com. And on this, I, in English, can provide psychic and medium mediumship session and spiritual hypnosis as well. I love that. Love that. Thank you for that. Thanks for being here. Thank you here. very much, Laura, for having me. All right. All right, Change Gang. I hope you had fun with that one. I did. I hope you go into your week. Have a wonderful week and that you meet me right here same time next week. Ciao. I hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun. If so, hey, find someone to share it with. Maybe they need to hear it too, or maybe they'll just enjoy it. If you'd like, go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success. It includes a free short meditation to do just that. You can find that at bit dot ly slash supercharge your success until next time happy day